Hello, thank you for joining me again. Sorry, I've had a little bit of a hiatus. I was sick for a while, but I'm feeling better. I am going to talk to you today about something I've been working on called Her Secret Name. Join me for my discussions into famous divine feminine women throughout history. Her Secret Name is meant to explore these women in history who maybe don't get the credit they truly deserve. The Feminine and Masculine Source. Let me begin this journey by stating unequivocally that I, as a woman, the author and a traditionalist at heart, love the Divine Masculine, the healed masculine, the strong and unrelenting masculine. In this hard world, where would we be without it? It is integral, like water to the thirsty, air for our lungs, a gift of protection, safety, and surety, fearless and covered in honor. In writing this homage to the Divine Feminine, I want to recognize that first and foremost, because what will follow will be a torrent of information and recognition of solely the Feminine that has been lost to time, discouraged and left on a quiet pile due to the other side of the masculine nature, the one that competes and cannot lose, the side that disavows even when attempting to pay its respects. In the most supportive of recountings of our long lost and forgotten tales, it is there. We are talked about always with the offhanded notation that this is uncommon in history, miraculous even. In every podcast, book, paper, and study, I hear its echo, most surreal as I think, but this is my ally. This man is trying to tell one of my stories and honor it. There I hear the words, telling the tale and diminishing it. Women had no rights. Other than this particular instance, women hadn't much authority. We cannot be sure why this woman was buried with weapons, but it must have been about the power of her family or husband. Women had very little say. Women couldn't rule. Women couldn't own property. The list of disparaging comments can go on ad nauseum forever, and usually does, directly after some statement of fact that makes it untrue. I do believe this is unconscious on the part of men trying to tell our story, and I think it is frequently on some level an effort to show the strength it takes in a world dominated by penis to rise to the station beyond what is normal. But I will recount these stories with careful consideration, not to provide a fairy tale, but to provide honest intellectual storytelling with sources to back up my assertions. You will know these women, how they became icons in a forgotten dust pile, unmentioned save for the afterthought or unique occurrence righteous in their power, sublime in their devious and defiant natures, how they did become important in an imbalanced world, and how sometimes the world was not as imbalanced as we've been led to believe. I will show cultures that supported and protected women. I will show men who supported and protected women with rational viable and respected material archaeology, written history, and records, I will lay before you another story, one you may not have heard but need to, because we are important. Balance in our world is important, and the relationship between the masculine and feminine is everything. Sin, Norse goddess of justice, rights of refusal, the gatekeeper. In a land of laws, what powers did women have? In ancient Scandinavia, the laws were advanced and ahead of their time, meant to protect people from vengeful feuds, land and property, and interestingly enough, women, in a way that in many other cultures would not for for hundreds of years. Women had the right to divorce their husbands, own land, titles, travel, And while families picked suitable matches within the appropriate caste of the family, it is even written in the Havamal 
that a match against the will of a woman was doomed to failure and ill tidings. Good advice even now. Norse antiquity was unique in its laws to govern. Social standards were handled eloquently with them. Amongst the bustle of trading centers, villages, and towns, the All Thing served as the oldest continuous democratic gathering, whereby with the meeting of the people, issues would be addressed, laws and sentences carried out. It is still in use today in Iceland. In matters of importance, protection, self-determination, legality, and refusal, we have a goddess, the servant of a goddess, Sin. Who was she? Attested to in the Prose Edda and also in the kinnings of skaldic poetry, her name means refusal. She is mentioned in reference to court proceedings. She is a guardian of the door of Frigga's Hall, Finsalir. In the Skalspar Mall, the proverb, if you say no, there will be denial, is in relation to sin. She is listed as the 11th goddess in the Prose Edda. She is a handmaid to Frigga. Her power as a warrior is assumed due to her position as a guardian of the door. This assumption being the same mental leap one would make if she was a male god. No one questions the warrior status of Tyr, the Norse god of justice. How important is law, your right to refuse? Are these things held in a state of value by the Scandinavian peoples? Seemingly so, when the breaking of an oath is considered worse than murder. If we are to follow the logic of the people and time, hold to their own espoused morality, then it follows that the goddess Sin was important, her role valuable to her people. What she stood for held weight and had impact. Her mention in scholarly work remains limited, while that of Tyr is prolific, frequently, and he is treated much like a superhero or a sports star when he himself was an oath breaker. But that is for another book entirely. As a follower myself of Norse lore and the Pantheon, I have always felt a strong connection with this goddess and what she stands for. A beautiful, strong force to reckon with. Call upon her for legal and court activities, or when you need strength to say no. Our next is the Queen Elizabeth, Queen of England, the first. We all know who she is historically. She is known the world over. In my imagination, I picture her as a young woman, alone with sadness ling lingering in her heart for a lost mother she never knew and the shadow of a father she, who couldn't make up his mind whether to leave her in his line of succession or not, in his zealous chase for the all-important son. In a letter written to her father at age 12, she does a trilingual translation of her stepmother Catherine Parr's prayers. She begs for a blessing and slathers on praise of him, desperate for a father's love, afraid already for what her place in this world might be. I imagine her at 25, being told of her succession, the emotions and feelings that would come rushing forward. Yet still she was able to so eloquently take the reins she had patiently waited for. She had this to say, to those who had come to swear their allegiance to her. My lords, the law of nature moves me to sorrow for my sister. The burden that has fallen upon me makes me amazed. And yet, considering I am God's creature, ordained to obey his appointment, I will thereto yield, desiring from the bottom of my heart that I may have assistance of his grace to be the minister of his heavenly will in this office now committed to me. And as I am but one body naturally considered, though by his permission a body politic to govern, so shall I desire you all 
to be assistant to me, that with my ruling and you with your service may make a good account to Almighty God and leave some effort in our posterity on earth. I mean to direct all my actions by good advice and counsel. She ruled with strength, perseverance, and determination for 45 years. Called the Elizabethan era, her subjects much loved her, and she is heavily considered the best ruler England ever had. She enjoyed dancing and was called the Virgin Queen due to never taking a husband in spite of many suitors. She did have love in her life, but held it very close to the vest. Her rule was tested with turmoil. She did not falter. Her persuasive power won the day when surrounded with men trying to sway her. Her fashion and sense of style was impeccable. That is it for today. Next time I will explore the Norns. Thank you again. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate you all.